I did it. I actually upgraded my Mac Mini M1 to the Mac Mini M2 Pro. As I said, I would if I was going to do an upgrade. So in this video, I wanted to share the differences that I've noticed and well, the things that I really didn't notice. It's complicated. So let me take you back. I got the M1 a couple of months ago because I wanted to test out the whole M architecture. It's the Apple chip. It's this Apple Silicon chip and it's and I heard it was really great. It, well, it's quiet, it's fast, it's efficient. And so I wanted to try it. So I got the Mac Mini M1 and I was just super amazed. And I made a video, actually I made several videos talking about whether or not it's worth to get the M2 Mac Mini or the M2 Pro Mac Mini. And a couple of days ago, I was sort of like, you know what? I need to test this bad boy and see for myself. So if we're just looking at the pure design of it, I know it's kind of disappointing. It looks exactly the same as the old M1 Mac mini. It's, it's the same like chassis, you know? The only difference I did notice that there are actually two more Thunderbolt ports in the back, which is great. I would have asked for something more like an, a card reader because I have to plug in this card reader to the back of my Mac mini and it sticks out and just doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. But other than that, this is the same old design since something like 2011. It's like really, really old. But the Mac mini has never really been about design, has it? Because let's face it, they haven't really changed anything about it. So the M2 Pro Mac mini has the same design as all previous MacBooks for the last 10 years or more. And that's kind of good in a way because maybe it helps to keep the costs down. I, I can just imagine that Apple basically ordered a whole bunch of Mac mini chassis and they're going to produce Mac minis using the same design for as long as they have, you know, the material for it, right? So I'm digressing. I'm sorry. I apologize. The Mac mini M2 Pro. So to be completely honest, when I booted it up for the first time, I really didn't notice much of a difference. Actually, I didn't notice any difference. Like there were, there were these moments where I was like, did I really plug in the M2 Pro? Like I, I was playing around, you know, watching YouTube videos. I was testing different apps and I, I really didn't notice anything. And then I was going to really test it out like by using Final Cut Pro, which is a very power hungry software to say the least, especially if you're editing in 4K videos and stuff like that. And that was going to be a real test. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering if I did any benchmarks or stuff like that, I tend to avoid benchmark tests altogether because benchmarks just seem to be, they don't really tell me much about anything, you know, because it's really all about how well is the M2 chip optimized for something like Final Cut Pro. The benchmark doesn't tell me that. So I pretty much stay clear of it. Now, let's get back to it. So Final Cut Pro editing video files. So I started to edit this uh, video file. It was a 10 minute 4K video and I did notice nothing. <laughs> like I didn't notice any difference whatsoever. I, I, I didn't really expect anything because with the M1 Mac mini, I already felt it was completely fluid. I didn't have any hiccups or issues or anything. So I don't really know what I was expecting, but I, I, I don't know, M2 Pro, I just felt it would be something really amazing. But then that's when it happened. I was going to export the file and I was like, whoa, that was a bit quick. Is that the way it should be? And so I sort of did some testing. I compared it to my old Mac mini M1. I still have the Mac mini M1. So I have two Mac minis. I'm probably going to sell one of them at some point because I don't really need two Mac minis, but I was doing these comparisons, just testing out, you know, how much faster did it export? And then I was also testing different file formats, you know, like H.264, H.265 and ProRes, right? And so ProRes was the big surprise. It was like so much faster when it comes to exporting, which is great and all. It's just that apart from uh, doing some stock video footage, you know, like these 10 second clips that I export, I really never export in ProRes. It's just really big, chunky files. And it wasn't really for me, but I can imagine that if you're working, making stock footage and you, you know, you need to have uncompressed final results, then uh, yeah, since you're always going to be exporting in ProRes, then I definitely felt that this machine is definitely for, you know, stock 
video makers, which I do a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, but mainly I do YouTube videos. And so for 10 minute videos, I like to export in H.264 or H.265. And I gotta say like, yes, uh, technically speaking, the M2 Pro sort of destroyed the M1, but the difference wasn't earth shattering, you know? It was like, huh, okay, a couple of minutes faster. And I suppose that if you're doing this on a, you know, daily routine, like if you're working as a YouTuber full time, you know, just spitting out video after video, then I suppose that the M2 Pro makes sense, like you're saving a little bit of time. But if you're just making a YouTube video every once in a while, like I do, uh, you know, the M2 Pro doesn't really do that much. And also, let's not forget there is the price point, right? Like the price point is very important. And right now, like if you look for Mac Mini M1, because they aren't technically being sold anymore, you can find them like really cheap, right? So if it's a matter of price, versus you know performance i still think and i've said this for like the last three mac mini videos that the mac mini m1 is a fantastic machine it's you get a lot a lot of value for the money that you spend and you're going to be probably be able to use it for something like five or six years before it becomes a bit obsolete right but if we're just talking about like a computer you're just spending too much money if you're getting something like the m2 pro you just you don't need that performance especially for the price that you pay now if you do want your top performance out of a mac machine then the m2 pro is no joke it's it's really fast and i was watching some charts and comparisons on other videos and the m2 pro is actually faster than the m1 mac think about that and the m1 max that's a that's a very fast chip you know what i'm saying so this is where i stand basically if you have the money and you want top performance go for it go for the m2 pro i mean that's that's what i did essentially but if you're thinking about it realistically and financially and you know economically <sighs> Like, I think you're gonna get a bit disappointed. Like, I would not upgrade from an M1 Mac Mini to an M2 Pro Mac Mini. I would not do that. Like, I'm sort of having second thoughts about getting the M2 Pro. Who knows, I might even release it, you know, give it back to the store or try to sell it at some point. I'm not sure, but I just feel like the M1, that was the real magic boost. You know, like, that was really impressive. Still to this day, I have not heard my Mac Mini M1, uh, you know, the fans, there are, apparently there are fans inside, or one fan. I haven't heard it once, okay? So with the M2 Pro, again, I haven't heard the fan even once, but I've had it a bit shorter, but I don't, th I don't think it's gonna disappoint me in that area either. So what else do we have? So we have the, the extra Thunderbolt ports, which is great, I like that. Um, I think there is also something with the Wi-Fi, a bit of an upgrade, Wi-Fi 6. I'm not, don't quote me on that. Uh, I haven't noticed any difference though when it comes to internet performance or anything like that. So essentially it's not a big upgrade, but again, like, you know, th that's the problem with diminishing results. Like the M1 is at such a high standard that you really you can't really complain about the m1 it's really that good and then you, you're getting the m2 pro it's like yeah technically it's there it's faster but um i i don't know i i just think that most people will experience what i experience if you're upgrading from the m1 to the m2 pro not a big deal and then you know what just to prove the point i i just might i might even return the m2 pro i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm you know you, as a tech geek you always want to have the latest stuff and so I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle this one because I also recently got uh, the MacBook Pro 16 inch and so I'm playing around with that. I'm a, I'm a tech geek, that's, that's the problem, right? But you know, the M2 Pro Mac Mini is a fantastic machine that I obviously recommend. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. The only problem is that M1 Mac Mini, which I still think is incredibly well-priced. And also, right now you can get the Mac Mini M2, the non-pro version, quite cheap also. So there are those two options. And when you look at the M2 Pro, I just I just don't see if it's worth if it's worth it, man. You know, like it's uh it's awesome and all, but uh, yeah. So I just wanted to share some thoughts about the M2 Pro. 
Hope you enjoyed this little video and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.